Okay, today we're going to sketch a hyperbola, and it's one of the conic sections. And um, first I just kind of want to go through and pretend that I wasn't given the fact that it was a hyperbola. Let's pretend it just said sketch the conic section given by this equation. And so um, I go through my little list of parabolas, ellipses, circles, and hyperbolas. Not in any particular order, but I do know that parabolas what makes a parabola's equation unique, I should ask you. Hopefully you said the, the thing that makes parabola's equations unique is the fact that x is squared or y is squared. They both can't be squared in order to be a parabola. Here we have both being squared, so that means he's either an ellipse, a circle, or a hyperbola. Um, is he an ellipse? And your answer should be no, and we should say why. And the reason is, is because this minus sign is unique to hyperbolas. So when you see this minus sign x squared and a minus y squared, or y squared minus x squared, that tends to be a hyperbola. So now that we've established that this is a hyperbola, let's write the general or just standard form of a hyperbola, um, which looks like this. x squared over a squared minus y squared over b oops over b squared equals to 1. Now there's two forms of the equation depending on if it goes up and down and left and right. Um, this is just one of the forms and because x is squared I'm going to pretend that I think that x should go first and let's see how that works out. Um, the other thing that you notice about hyperbolas is this one right here, which if you're playing matching with our with our friend over here, this is not a one. So you're gonna brainstorm right now and try to figure out how to get this 16 to be a one. Hopefully you said let's divide by 16 to every single piece. Because then now it's even looking more like this equation over here. Um, so um, I noticed that this 4, oops, rid of that. Um, this 4 and this 16 are going to cancel. This 4 and this 16 are going to cancel right here. I don't know what it's doing. Um, leaving a 4 on the bottom, so that's the extra factor left over. So I'm going to just rewrite this equation so that it looks more like this. First of all, we have this wonderful 1 right here, which means that now he's almost in standard form. And then I write x squared over 2 squared. And I like to see him as 2 squared and not 4 because that's how I'm going to essentially graph him. Um, then we get minus y squared over 4 squared for the same reason. Okay. And so now I'm going to try to graph this guy. And the important pieces of a, a hyperbola are going to be the center and the vertices. And then um, your uh, asymptotes. Okay, so the center first. Let's do that. Well, since I have no H here and no K here, that means it's 0, 0. So let's make a big dot at 0, 0. That's my center, so let's label that here, 0, comma, 0. Now my vertices comes from whoever comes first. Now notice because x comes first, I go in the 2 direction. Does this sound familiar? This should also be the same way that I'm graphing an ellipse. So it just says go 2 in the x direction and go 4 in the y direction. So let me do that really quick. Let me change colors just so it stands out a little bit. So I'm going to go 2 in the x direction, 1, 2 from my center, and 1, 2 from my center. Now everything happens from my center. My vertices, um, my foci, everything does. Okay, and then now, so let's label those really quick. I think that's 2, 0, and negative 2, 0. And you can notice the similar y y's that they have going on here and that makes so much sense because they all have to be lined up either this way or this way. Now um, I'm just gonna continue on and I'm gonna graph this 4 in the y direction. These are not covertices, okay? 
These are not co-vertices. Um, the reason why these are not co-vertices is because this is not an ellipse. But um, I am going to use them to construct my rectangle. If you notice here, there's going to be this rectangle that forms right there. Um, and I'm going to use that to form my rectangle so that I can then draw in my um, my um, um, what is it called? My asymptotes. So I'm going to draw this like um, rectangle and I like to use a dashed line just because um, I know it's not part of my hyperbola but it helps me graph my hyperbola. So do you guys all see that rectangle there? Now this rectangle is important because now I'm going to come over here and use these these um, lines and I'm going to construct my asymptotes. Now definition of these asymptotes is it's going to go through the corner of this rectangle or if you want to think about it it's going to have the rise and the run of this here's your B over A so there's your rise over run so I use this rectangle to construct that you could also just count up and over, which makes sense too. I like this rectangle though because it helps me like look at where everything comes from. Alright, let's try to graph that. Okay, so there I have my asymptotes. And now the only thing left to do is to figure out, okay, well where am I going? Am I going left and right? Or am I going up and down? And so hopefully you said left and right. Now the reason why it's left and right is because who came first? X squared. Because X squared comes first that means that determined my vertices dot here dot here and then that also determines my branches here and here. Now this is where I have to tell you I, I don't do a good job of drawing. So I just go for my vertex and I go somewhat closer to my asymptote. Now eventually if you get really really far out there they they almost look like they're connecting. And then I continue down this way and I go that way. So there's one branch, that's the right branch. And this is the... oops, you can't do it. This is the left branch right here. Okay, let me erase that. So there's my hyperbola, and uh, hopefully this makes so much sense to you. How could you check your answers? Well, I'm going to take these two vertices, here and here, or right here. I'm going to plug them into my equation and make sure that they make sense. So for example, I do this. Um, plug that 2 into there. It'd be 2 squared, so it would look something like this. It would look like 4 parentheses 2 squared minus... 2 squared equals 16. Oops, I messed up. I shouldn't have done that. Do you know where I messed up? Who should I erase? This guy or this guy? Yep, that's right. I should have erased him. Now it's not 2 comma 2, it's 2 comma 0. So let's see if that's right. 2 squared is 4 times 4 is 16. 0 squared is 0. And is, is it true that 16 minus 0 is 16? That's a question. And if you say yes, then that right there is part of my hyperbola. But if you said no, then it's not. And it's true. It's true that 16 equals 16. Oh, I don't know why. There you go. Done. So um, practice this. See if this makes sense to you. You should know and understand questions like, why is it at 0, 0? Why does it go left, right? And how do we get this one here? Um, go over this again and make sure that it makes sense to you. Have a great day.